Yes, yeah, so uh, as Tom alluded to, we're running a bit behind schedule. I think uh, probably a very foolish thing is to give three college professors a microphone and a podium. Um, so I, w I will keep this brief. Uh, let me, before I forget, let me just say for people who are watching online that um, all these studies are available at the Institute for Energy Research org. Um, that's not to detract from uh, Gabriel's free market website, but I think his is in Spanish, and so that's the advantage of ours. Uh, <laughs> For the American viewers, of course. So, uh, just I want to step back and just very briefly, wh what's going on here? I, I think the important thing economists need to get the general public to see is that it is not true that you can have your cake and eat it too when it comes to green jobs. That if it's the case that many of the natural scientists are correct and that emissions of greenhouse gases are uh, laying the ground groundwork for future climate change that's going to be very harmful to human beings and the industry right now is not what's called internalizing those costs. If that's true, and I'm not a climatologist, so I'm, not, of course, not qualified to, to challenge, although there, there have been climatologists who would challenge it, but that's, that's not my role as an economist. But if that's true, then, okay, there's a trade-off, and that means the government might want to implement policies to uh, reduce carbon emissions and other greenhouse gas emissions now, and so we're going to sacrifice potential material output now. We're going to have fewer TVs, fewer houses, fewer cars now, people are going to lose good jobs now and have to take jobs that pay less or that are inferior in some other respect, but the benefit is that the earth doesn't warm as quickly or that these other climate damages don't occur with as high a probability. Right? So that's the trade-off. And there are plenty of economists at big schools who are for government intervention to combat climate change who will tell you that, that the very serious respected economists will say, yes, there's this trade-off and we can destroy jobs now or make the economy poorer in exchange for reducing or mitigating the uh, possible damage of future climate change. But that's not the message that's being sold to the public. They're being sold that there's going to be this green recovery that not only will subsidies for green jobs and uh, cap and trade and all these other programs, not only will these things save the planet, but at the same time it's going to give a shot in the arm to the economy because look at all these jobs we're going to create. And so who could possibly oppose that except somebody who you know either hates human beings or is in the pay of uh, big oil, something like that, right? So that's the message that's being promulgated. And so, again, I don't have time to get into it now. I want to save time for your questions. But let me just try to show you that that can't possibly be true, that that's crazy, that uh, what that worldview would mean, and Tom alluded to this, is that you've got these greedy, uh, grasping business people, and all they care about is money. And all of their engineers and scientists and economists on staff have overlooked for decades the potential benefits of going green. And some bureaucrats and staff economists for government have come up with a way that these businesses can all make more money. And not only do the businesses not want to do the plan, I mean, because it's right there, if that's true, somehow, then it shouldn't take mandates that the government should just fax the plan to all the CEOs, and they say, oh my gosh, there's millions of dollars here that we've been ignoring all these decades, why don't we do this? But not only are the businesses ignoring this way to make money, but they're actually paying lobbyists to, to argue to the government, stop trying to force us to make more profit. Right, because they're, they're, they're against these mandates. So that's the world that you have to have if you think that this green job program is going to be one that's going to promote uh, job growth and that's good for the economy in addition to saving the planet. Right, so that, that can't be right. And that's the thing we study, uh, or we stress in our study, is that if you go in and look at the, the, the chief studies that purport to show this alleged green recovery and that we're not only going to save the planet but also boost the economy at the same time, there's just incredibly simplistic errors that they make. And uh, let me just focus on, on, on two of those. So, the, so one is this notion that they, they count up job creation, but they ignore job destruction. And so as Gabriel mentioned, what they'll do, the way they come up with these figures to show how many jobs will be created if we spend such and such on green jobs, is they just say, okay, let's assume this money comes from heaven, and we just start handing it out, and yeah, you can count up all the jobs you'd create by buying stuff if you ignore where the money came from. So that's one way to see it, that look, every dollar the government spends is either taxed or borrowed, and so presumably that's going to be destroying jobs elsewhere. But there's another way to see it, is that you know, in the long run, there's only a certain amount of workers. You can't have more jobs being created than there are workers to fill them. That's impossible. And the way these models work, where they calculate how many jobs would be created in industries X, Y, and Z if we spent this much money, there's no, uh, there's no feedback mechanism to catch an absurdity. So, for example, a Center for American Progress study that we look at in, in the IER uh, critique, they say if the government spends $100 billion, that will uh, create 2 million jobs. But the way the logic of where they came up with that number, if you just bumped up the numbers and said that the government, if it spent $10 trillion, 
it could create 200 million jobs, if I'm, if I'm doing the math correctly. Right? So there's nothing in their model that would catch that mistake, but yet you can't create 200 million green jobs because there's not that many workers in the U.S. See what I'm saying? At some point, if you're creating a job creating solar panels or wind turbines, that worker who's now filling it, and you could do that. If you're going to pay enough money, it's, you know, the Federal Reserve can just print up money and we can pay people to go do whatever we want, and they'll do it. The workers will show up if it pays more than other jobs. But if, if the person filling that job wasn't previously unemployed, if that person used to have a job doing something else, then you haven't created a job on net. You've just created a job where the politicians are steering money and you've destroyed a job elsewhere. Right? So the only way these green programs and so on can work is if all these new jobs being created just so happen to correspond to all the skills of the people who right now are unemployed. That's the only way, even in the short run, it could possibly be true that uh, these jobs are all on net going to be uh, additions to the economy. All right? So uh, let me stop there, but I think you, you see the point here that it, it, these studies on the face of them, they can't possibly be right, and if you care for the details in our study, the IER one, and, the, and these other ones as well, we go through and we show you specifically what basic simplistic mistakes are these pro-green job studies making where they're coming up with these results that just they can't be true. Thanks.